Hello and welcome to uh, this edition of Using R. In the next uh, roughly um, <clears throat> a few slides of this particular slide deck, we are going to learn how we can read data in R. R is usually uh, used as a statistical programming environment, which means that it's very well suited for complex statistical data analysis and even uh, development of new routines and new ways of doing uh, things. Uh, and you can certainly use textbooks to develop examples and other procedures uh, using entirely R as your um, programming language. The first thing though for statistical data analysis is to make sure that you can um, read data into R. So in this set of slide decks we are going to learn what other different ways in which you can read um, data sets into R and in this particular set of slide decks we are going to focus only on reading textual data and in a uh, separate tutorial I'm going to talk about how you can read um, what is known as data from foreign packages, although we are just going to touch this um, very briefly. And um, as you know, this is part of the e Shala Karyakram of the uh, Ministry of HRD and uh, Education Ministry of, the, um, of India. My name is Arindam Basu. I am based at the University of Canterbury at Christchurch in New Zealand. And um, so this is about who I am. And here is a basic um, kind of the roadmap or learning objectives um, of this uh, particular tutorial. When I began to write this, I thought that I would uh, talk a little bit about reading data and then pre-processing the data and transforming the data and then summarize everything. But later on, it um, occurred to me that I think it would be a good idea to focus um, for this particular tutorial only on reading data rather than pre-processing or transformation of data, you will learn them eventually in course of this, um, this set of tutorials. But because this is kind of one of the first things that um, we do, therefore when you start learning using R in, um, in all its glory for that matter, um, it is very important that you learn to read data first and that's really really important and what do I mean by reading data well if you think and reflect for a while in terms of what what do what do we mean by reading it's basically a sort of pattern recognition and understanding what it is that we are doing so reading for instance from our early on if you if you reflect back um, in on your childhood days for instance you will see that by reading what we meant was that that we recognized a few characters you know like a b c d or you know, as the case maybe in your native language and then what you did was that that when a text was presented to you or a picture was presented to you you would read or you would comprehend that those glyphs and those pictures, those um, the meanings of uh, of those things, and you deduce this. So, when we talk in terms of reading information in the context of a um, of a software or a kind of a programming environment such as R, um, the concepts are very very similar. So you can take, a, um, take almost any object, convert that into a digital artifact, and then you can store it in a network or on another device or in a hard, um, you know, a, a folder in your hard drive. And then you invoke R. And then what you need to do is, in some way, you need to bring that object into the R statistical programming environment. And that's what we mean when we say read something. So this is something that we are going to learn about it. 
but you will soon see that there are certain things that we also want to do in R. So it is a very good time to spend some time talking about those things. So um, as I mentioned that we um, uh, there are essentially kind of four objectives of the lesson. The first objective of course is to explain very very clearly that we should be able to read data in a number of different ways and um, it will soon become very clear that you can use uh, you can do certain things by um, by way of reading um, you know series of numbers or texts um, or other things um, using the console and I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by this it is very important when we read data into R that we should be able to edit that data and in this particular tutorial I would really like to emphasize this point a little bit now yes we know that R is a statistical programming environment but most of us who use R in meaningful ways for our day-to-day -day data analysis we use R as um, more like a a statistical package and it's you know it's it's kind of um, intuitive to use um, out that way I mean of course you can read in data and then you can work with R in that sense and do things but uh, you know on a, on a more regular day-to-day -day life and particularly the purpose of this set of tutorials is not so much to show you how you can develop packages using R and you know a, a, a list of other associated languages but um, to be absolutely honest the audience that I have in mind ie you know advanced students or you know students of statistics or those of you who are going to do some data analysis using numbers and perhaps letters and textual data analysis whoever that is it is not um, it is not um, unlikely that I think of you as um, as individuals who are actually going to um, engage in um, in manipulation of data which means that you will be you know handling data you will be reading in data and you will be exporting data out of R and you will be um, then transforming those data and you will be working on um, the numerical data for instance or textual data or image data or voice data or video data as the case may be. Now if you think um, for a while, if you step back for a while and think R in the context of a um, really beautiful statistical data environment or statistical data analysis environment for that matter, other comparable packages for example the statistical analytical system or SAS or statistical processes for social sciences or social scientists or SPSS or STATA all of these have got a very nice kind of built-in function that will let you not only to read in data but also manipulate data within the same environment and there is a historical um, twist to it which we shall be discussing in course of these um, these lectures that you know historically when R was first framed and R is only in its like um, third major um, series of iterations we are still on three dot something something so it's not really all that old or well established I mean it's well established but it's not that old um, there was a bias that um, you know you could actually manipulate uh, data outside of R. We'll revisit this. We'll we'll we'll, we'll visit this. But um, but it was felt for a very long time that we should be able to um, you know somehow manipulate data, not just as an object, but be able to visualize them. So that required that R would be would develop a graphical user interface. And um, when you use the R's graphical user interface, then you should be able to invoke a graphical user interface to then 
um, edit and manipulate data. So this is why it's very important that we should be able to edit data into R and we should be covering, covering this um, as well. We should be able to read data from text files into R. This is very, very important because, you know, text files are very compact, very useful things that we should be able to do that. So essentially in this um, tutorial, we are going to cover that you will be able to read textual data into R and some very, very simple manipulation of that data by way of editing them. We will be looking at some other examples um, in, the, um, in, in, in some other, other ways, but um, here that's, that's a thing. And the last but not the least objective, which is for which we have devoted an entirely new, uh, a different tutorial for this, is that you should be able to read data from foreign file formats into R. So I'm not going to go into a great detail into what do I mean by foreign file formats, which will be um, dealt um, in another part of our lecture, but we'll see. This is very intuitive. That is, you got um, some numbers that you really would like to work on and you would like to iteratively build up a data set and then you wanted to, uh, and, and you know, then you would like to analyze that. At other times, I mean, this is, this is in the context of your own learning, but in another context, you may get a bunch of data that you'd like to actually ask people to load onto your own um, kind of machine. That is, you know, you would like to actually ask somebody to type in data, which then you can go back and um, analyze it yourself. While many of us are quite habituated to use actually data that is given to us in the form of paper and pencil, or in the form of a, of a um, computer text file, um, it is not uncommon to actually leave up a console in which people would actually be typing data, or maybe you want to type data. And fortunately, and you know, not fortunately, but it's kind of by, by design, R provides you such an opportunity because R has got a function which is known as scan. And scan is quite literally what it says. It kind of scans your console so that you can um, you can do whatever you like, which means that um, well, well, let me go to uh, go to the code of the scan um, carefully and show you um, um, show you the nitty gritty of it a little bit. So, uh, on the left hand side of this screen, you're going to see that I have stored the result of a scan function into an object which is known as my var and my var essentially is a vector the way i have set it up because what i have done is i have used a function called scan and then i have left the file space blank so where you are seeing that there are two um, quote marks you could actually input a a text file and R would take it but I wanted that R should um, rather than use a text file to which I have inputted data and then read them up because there are other ways in which R can more efficiently read files I left it as a uh, at the level of a console so I left it as a console and then I have specified as to what it is that R is going to read so it is somewhat um, intuitive. It is probably not very, um, very academic, but you see that there is a parameter called what. And that what, I have specified that it's going to have numeric variable in it. And I've closed that bracket. So in, in other words, I have closed that function up. So you can see on the right hand side, when I started running that uh, particular um, section of the R script, it says that, okay, scan from the console, which is a blank, uh, quote, 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 unquote, um, space, and, you know, R 
you should only read numeric data into it. And so then I have um, I've clicked enter and immediately I find that there are like five or six lines come up. So till five lines are kind of randomly punched in numbers and then when it comes to the six lines I've left it blank I hit an enter and then R understands that um, you know it has read five items. So, so on the left hand side you see a motif of a of a, of, a, of a script um, which you can use. On the right hand side you see exactly you know if I, if I could do it how I do it. I mean, you, you could use my var and then use a scan function. So in the object x um, r puts a stream of, uh, of, 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 of a vector of like um, five numbers. You can obviously understand that in another iteration I could have called it like y scan leave a blank what um, maybe text data and it would put a text value to this. So over and over repeatedly I would be able to then build up a data set which I'd be analyzing or I could ask other people to put their names in it using a form or something and then I draw in and put it into R. Okay. So that's one way of reading data into R from a, from a console. More, um, more commonly though, we would um, like R to read a data from a plain text file. And when we say that R should be able to read data from a plain text file, what we mean is this, that there should be a string of numbers, texts, other forms of data sets, which could be encoded digitally and presented in the form of a plain text file. The most commonly used plain text file would require that each of your um, your data set, if that were to be coerced into a rectangular data format, would rather satisfy two things. One, your columns are going to specify that you are going to deal with you know any number of variables that you want to deal with. The second aspect of that rectangular grid of data that you will be working on would mean that your rows for such a grid would consist of your observations. So keep this in mind. Generally when we talk in terms of a grid we talk in terms of rows and columns. In this particular situation your rows each row will um, contain one observation. Each column will contain information on one variable that you want to analyze. This is the simplest representation of a square grid that you're going to analyze. There is a third um, understanding or assumption or um, a, a way of specifying what we want out of this is this that each line that is each observation will end somewhere so the new line will be a new observation right so that's that's how it's all all arranged there are different ways in which you can separate each individual quantum of information in such a rectangular grid you can use a tab character to separate them or you can use a comma character to separate them. In the world of data analysis, it is very common to use comma as a character to separate each quantum of information one from the other. Therefore, in each row, for each variable, you find that information is separated by insertion of a comma character. Such a file is stored in the form of a comma separated value file. A plain text file, you create that file if you're using a Windows operating system, for example, in a simple um, program such as Notepad or a very simple uh, notes feature. And all you need to do is just specify the observations, specify the variable, individual quantum of data, and you separate them using um, 
a comma character. And when your observation ends, you leave it in the form of a blank um, line. So the next line becomes your next observation and so on. You keep that to a file, which is a text file, which gets a name called you know, like a bod.csv in this particular case, like biological oxygen demand, for example. And then what you do is this, that you, um, you save that in a particular file, and then you will ask R to read that file. So when we want it, then we would ask R that R read the CSV file. And it is like, you know, giving R a plain instruction in English, like read.csv, okay, read a CSV file, R read.csv. But reading that CSV file, you do not want to waste it because you would like to really to save the contents of that function into a, an object, which is my data in this particular case. And you save that into the, into the object my data, which is like the data which you are then going to manipulate. And you have to specify certain things. The most important thing that you need to specify is you need to tell R that, look, R, it has got a header um, data here. So then what R will do is R will start scanning that file and um, it will look for the first um, row of that file and it will say that, well, that is a header row. So anything that goes into that first row, it is going to put it as if that is, um, that, that are the variable names there. Very, very important. I know that it is not really very intuitive to tell R that the separator is a comma because you could uh, imagine that if R is so intelligent that it can read a CSV file, then it should know that it's a comma separator. But sometimes, you know what, um, you could actually separate them using a tab character, but you could still name that file as a .csv file. I mean, there is no reason why people should do that, but sometimes people do. So it makes sense to mention very clearly that the separator is actually a comma character or a tab character or a dot character, et cetera, et cetera. Because sometimes it so happens that in some uh, conventions, you know, decimal points are separated by comma rather than a dot. So um, comma may not be a good idea to separate individual uh, chunks of data people use, maybe a tab character. So that's the reason why you have to have a SAP um, mentioned quite clearly. You can see that in this particular case, I have read the CSV file, but I've also decided to override the variable names. You can do that because even though you say that, look, the header is true because it contains that, but you may not like the variable names so what you'd like to do is then you'd like to read the, um, the ID and um, all of these things, okay? So that's how you read a comma separated value file. And as far as possible, you should uh, try to use a comma separated value file when reading files in R. The next thing that we would like to really uh, emphasize here is that, that you can actually use R itself, that is the R program itself, to edit a rectangular data matrix. It's a very, very important um, thing that, as we have already discussed, for a number of reasons. R uses a GUI function, which means that if you use the, um, if, you, if you use edit, it's as simple as that. So you take that object to which you have stored the contents of the file that you want to read, and then you order R that you would like to edit that object. When you do that, depending on your operating system and its configurations, R would like to invoke another graphical user interface, and that graphical user interface is based on kind of an X device in Max and, you know, other ways, otherwise a rectangular um, device that draws on your screen 
and then it is going to put something like a copy paste etc which gives you a data editor the beauty of the data editor is this that it is exactly like a spreadsheet like an excel spreadsheet so what you can do is this that you can have the fine granularity of going into each individual data quantum and you can then uh, change that you can change the name of the variable you can change individual data point um, you can edit it when you are done you can save the data set or you can quit it and it is automatically going to save that data object but the other thing that it does is this that it kind of dumps everything into you your screen so one thing that you can do is this that you can even save that edit function and store it into an object so that it does not dump anything to your screen but just puts it back into the new uh, data frame object that you would then like to work with so that's why I say that when you close the data will be saved so in other words if you just click quit and then R is going to save um, everything that you've done to the data grid okay just remember that if you want to dump the contents then dump the contents into an object rather than clutter up your screen this is particularly useful if you're dealing with like thousands and thousands of data lines because otherwise that's going to throw your um, kind of R console into uh, such a desire that you can't really um, make much sense of this in the next we are going to take a quick look at um, you can use a code to read data from foreign files but remember that I'm not going to spend much time on this you can read foreign files into R there's a whole tutorial coming up next for this so essentially it's a very very short code that you can use so like if you take a look at this you will see that you can uh, you need to um, put in a package you have to install that package you have to call the libraries and they can read them but um, for the time being hold your thoughts onto this but why did I then uh, put this here well the reason why I put this here is because I just wanted to make it quite integrative that you can read data into R right so you can read from a console you can read from kind of a text file and I encourage you that you should always look for a comma separated value file which is the most widely used file format of data that are available on and off the web everywhere using CSV files and you can read them and to make everything complete you can you're not really constrained by R only you can read other foreign file formats as well so that's the reason why I kind of mentioned um, foreign file reading in R, but it's not the main objective of this particular uh, tutorial. So it's time to wrap up things a little bit and let's um, quickly recap certain things that we, had to, we want to do. It's a very simple, straightforward, highly introductory, but very, very focused tutorial. Remember that I would always encourage you, the analyst, to start thinking in terms of reading textual data in R or data directly from console. So that's the reason why I didn't go at great length and showing you all the varieties that you can do. Remember that you can use help and then um, you know put parentheses across and say read.csv and R will dump you all the necessary information that you can learn about that. But again, the high impact points of this always um, invoke um, you know they read some sort of a delimited file to um, get um, get R. You can also use what is known as a read lines function for um, for using data from R line by line reading. You can read data into R from text files such as comma separated value files. You can use a scan function to read um, read um, file directly from console. You will see later when we talk about the foreign packages that scan has got another intelligent and clever use about reading uh, files from Excel spreadsheets for example and from uh, clipboard and if you want to read really foreign packages which we will be discussing later on you can use the foreign package to read data from SPSS, Stata and other software so with these few notes i'd like to really thank you for paying attention to this and uh, let's move on to the next topic
Thank you very much.